All right, I'm gonna save your season. This is a massive video. In this video, you're gonna get all the players you need to get rid of right now and also not being tricked into getting them. Don't let anybody try to fool you to get these guys. So the players you need to get rid of and also at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you all the players you need to acquire, the guys that are actually gonna help you win your leagues. This is a massive video. If you guys wanna win your leagues, if you wanna save your season, if you wanna to continue to win, this is the video because I'm gonna lay it out for you outside the box thinking. If you do the channel, smash it, tap it, slap it. I'm excited to dive into this video and drop your starts and sits questions for NFL Week 8. It's a complete video. I'm going to help you guys out. So drop your starts and sits questions. I'll try to get to as many as I can. But make sure you watch the entire video, okay? Stay till the end. This is important. This is going to save your season. The guys need to get rid of and the guys need to add. Let's get to it. All right, guys, happy Friday. Excited to dive into this video and save your season and give you guys some insight that nobody else is talking about. I'm always ahead of the curve, and everybody that got 16 rounds and is following the channel is also ahead of the curve. If you want to be outside the box, non can sheep to style, and actually want to win your leagues, smash it, tap it, slap it, drop your questions below. And if you want to win at sports bets, we're crushing it on the counselor's edge. Get the council's edge right now. Yesterday, I was right on the Rams winning and covering, okay? So if you guys want to crush sports bets, the council's edge below to get my NFL picks. And last week, I think I was wrong on like three straight up picks. It was amazing, amazing stuff, okay? So this is the video you need. Watch the enemy of you, all the players as well that you need to acquire. Let's dive into it. Drop your questions below and turn on that bell and the thumbs up, okay? So let's dive into these players you need to get rid of now. I hear a lot of trade talk and people send me DMs on Instagram. If you're not following on Instagram, make sure you follow at Fantasy Football Counselor. And they're sending me DMs. They're like, man, you know, people want to give me this player and that player. I'm like, dude, that player is trending down. We got to talk about the players that are trending down, the players that are trending up. So let's focus on the players that are trending down and why they're trending down. You need to get rid of, and I'll tell you the guys you need to acquire. So the first players you need to get rid of, right? Uh, first player anyway is Anthony Richardson, okay? Anthony Richardson. You should have never drafted. And if you got 16 rounds, all of this is making sense to you. All our players are hitting, okay? Minus like Zamir White. He's my Achilles heel. Everyone else is kind of hitting. Even Keon Coleman. Everyone is on Keon Coleman this week on the waiver wire. I'm like, dude, I'm the Keon Coleman guy. All right, so let's talk about this. Anthony Richardson has an easy matchup versus Houston. So you can wait and hope he has a big game and then trade high. Now he's sitting at QB 29 on the year, 8.8 .8 fantasy last uh, points last week. At a 59, 59 guys, <laughs> passer rating as a quarterback, dude, this guy's not good. I've been telling you this, okay? So you could wait, hope he has a good week. You could try to trade now, but you're trading a little bit low. Bottom line is you need to get rid of Anthony Richardson, but he does have an easy matchup this week. You could exploit that, okay? Now, if someone's coming to you saying, here, have Anthony Richardson after a big week because he's playing Houston, decent matchup, don't pick up Anthony Richardson, okay? Second player here is Javante Williams coming off a big week last week, and he's got an easy matchup versus Carolina. Now, I'm not sold and convinced in any way, shape, or form that Javante Williams is the alpha. I mean, he's like the alpha on the team, but that team is, ah, you know, I'm just not sold on this team. They got Audric Estime, they got McLaughlin there. Now, he pulled up this 26-point week last week because he did have those two rushing touchdowns, but it's only on 14 attempts. If you look at the entire season and you zoom out, he's not that good. He's had years to wow us. We're not wowed. You can say, well, Joe, maybe he's turned over a new leaf and he's kind of found his own and he's kind of, you know, now he's the guy that we want him to be. I'm not sold on that, man. I'm just not sold on Javante Williams being the guy. I would, you know, you could trade him away if you got him. And if someone's trying to trick you into trading him, don't buy into it, okay? The next guy is a quarterback here. Again, this is very important. Because some of these players you may not have, but you want to listen because someone's trying to bait you as well. Uh, Baker Mayfield, QB number two on the year. Pretty remarkable. But understand that Mike Evans is out till week 12 and Godwin is done for the season. Those are his two wide receivers, top wide receivers. Now, there's other guys that are going to step up. Cade Autumn is going to get some work. There's a tight end you might want to try to get. But when I'm looking at his stats, even from last year, last year he finished 10th amongst quarterbacks. Not bad. But 28 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, not the greatest, 274 fantasy points. Again, top 10 type quarterback numbers. But this year, he's lost his main wide receivers. I just don't feel warm and fuzzy 
and comfortable with him. And the thing is, his numbers are still good. Like, he's a number two quarterback, and this is where you could bait other people into getting him. His numbers are only going to go down. There's other quarterbacks, which I'm going to mention, that you should be getting. So I would try my best to get rid of him as soon as possible because I believe he's trending down based on the situation and scenario. When you lose your top two receivers, and you can say, well, Joe, Mike Evans is coming back week 12, but guys, I'm looking at the, the date. We're on week eight. These are a precious four weeks where he's going to naturally regress, and I'm just not willing to deal with that as it was my quarterback, okay? Look out for that. The next one is Garrett Wilson, sitting as like wide receiver five in fantasy points. Now, he only has, what, like three touchdowns on the year. That's not very good. And when I look at this, man, if you take a look at this, Adams is there now. I look at the receptions last week, nine to nine. Okay, well, now you're like saying, well, Joe, you know, still Garrett's the one. I don't think so. I think Adams is now going to emerge. It was his first week in, and he's already matching him in targets. It's going to get diluted regardless. Even if Garrett Wilson does get fed, Adams is there taking a bulk of that volume, and Lazard's getting his work, and Brees Hall, I think they're going to increase the run game a little bit more. Dude, I just, I would get rid of Garrett now while people still think he's the one, but I, I think people are going to start you know, buying into the Adams a little bit more. And I think his value is going to plummet. So this is the week to get rid of Garrett Wilson while you can. Okay. The next guy you want to get rid of is Sam Laporta, but you may want to wait till after this week to get rid of him. Cause with Jamison William being suspended for a couple games, he could actually start seeing more target share. So now is the time to say, Hey, Sam Laporta, fire him up if you got him, but I'm going to sell high. Cause when Jamison Williams comes back, the trend we were seeing is Sam Laporta sucks. So Sam Laporta is sitting at, as tight end 22, one touchdown on the season, and 42 fantasy points. So what's going to happen is, again, target distribution is going to go his way with James Sim Williams out these two games, and he's going to go probably go back to his old self. So now you got to monitor this week, hope he has a big week, and sell high, okay? So he's trending down on the year. And this is a guy, if you got 60 rounds last year, we're like, Man, what a deal. Because we got him in the 10th round and he crushed it. This year, the Kashyyyps are riding him because all they do is basically go on recency bias, right? They're riding him and, and they basically overpaid, you over, overpaid for him and he's underperforming, right? Overpaid, underdelivered for Sam Laporta. We're on the next train, guys. 16 rounds this channel. We're already on the next hot train, right? Another guy you need to get rid of is T. Higgins. He just sucks. He's coming off a big week. I think he had 18 points last week. You want to trade on, trade him right away. And also the Packers receivers, including Watson and Wicks. Romeo Dobbs is the guy, and second in command is going to be Reed. Based on target distribution last week, it looked like, man, I'm looking at the numbers here. Dobbs had the 10 targets. Reed had four targets. Wicks had six, but the week before only had three. And Watson only had two targets last week. So, Again, I'm looking at the trends here, and all the everything was indicating prior to the season that Dobbs is the one. In the past two weeks, he has been. I think that's going to continue. So I would look to get Dobbs and get rid of Watson and Wicks. Wicks was never draft-worthy or acquirable. This guy is the wide receiver four on this team. Now, they're always going to distribute the ball, no doubt, but there is an alpha there, and I still believe it's Dobbs, okay? So I would trade away Watson and Wicks and get what you can out of them, okay? So then those are the players to get rid of, okay? Well, Joe... Who should we get? Ironically, this is the funny part out of this whole thing. All the players that you should get are guys I told you to draft. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Now, some of them, uh, I don't have stock in, though. Like um, Lamar. So let's start with quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson, I've got no stock in. But definitely looks to acquire him. Well, Joe, that's common sense. He's a top quarterback. Yes, yes. But there is other guys you could trade bait and get rid of. Some of the guys I mentioned, you could trade bait. But it's all got to be about the timing because people are all about recency bias. So if Lamar has a dip and another quarterback has a spike, let's say Anthony Richardson spikes has a 40-point game, boom, I'm not buying that. I'm I'm definitely trading away Richardson, right? I'm looking for the consistency. You want to look for consistency. You don't want to look for the recent spike and the recency bias, Okay. Start using your sense, your common sense here, guys, okay? So Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, and Jordan Love all trending upwards. J Jalen Hurts had a slower start, but now he's in full strength as wide receivers, okay? They're back. So let's talk about, you know, the other positions. But Josh Allen is the guy I told you to draft. I told you to draft all these guys. But Josh Allen is the guy I got my on my teams, but he's trending up with the acquisition of Wyatt Cooper and Keon Coleman coming into his own, okay? So look to get these quarterbacks. You want to anchor your team with an ace quarterback? Look to get them. Now, if you got 16 rounds... You got a lot of trade bait because you got a lot of these sleepers. You got a lot of these breakouts. You got a lot of RB depth. You could 
you know, sp spark some trades. The running backs to get. Well, you're saying, well, Joe, thanks, Captain Obvious. These guys are on top. Exactly. I told you to draft them, but you need these guys on your team because you need consistency. There, now, there's a lot of pretenders out there. There's the Chuba Hubbards of the world. There's the Aaron Jones of the world, which I, I, I believe these guys are true pretenders. I don't think they're true workhorse running backs. If they have a hot week, get rid of them. The guys you want to get, Derrick Henry, Kyron Williams, Saquon Barkley, Brees Hall, Bijan, and Gibbs. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Yes, these are the guys I told you to draft at the beginning of the season going top heavy. And get Tank Bigsby as a get again as well. He's trending upwards, and ETN is day-to-day -day for NFL Week 8. But what I'm telling you guys, I'm going to tell you guys again. Robust is the way to go. And I just shared a team of mine on my last video where I went zero RB. Right, and I just went wide receivers, and that team is tanking. I did that. I went against the grain. I did everything against what I believe in to see how it did. It was an experiment, and that team sucks. Now, some people say, "Well, Joe, you got to work the waiver wire." One guy said in the comments, "You got to work the waiver wire." Yada yada. Yeah, you can still salvage a team where you went zero RB, but it hurts, man. When your wide, your running back one is Ty Chandler or some of these other bottom feeders. Okay, so robust is the way to go in a, in a dying situation you know the, the way the dinosaur are the running backs okay wide receivers to acquire drake london brian thomas jr again you're going for the alphas here malik neighbors who's kind of dipped down a little bit because that offense people might think that they completely suck but i still think he's going to be a volume hog and the talent is there cannot deny talent talent always rises to the top malik neighbors keon coleman who's emerges the one and i said this i'm like as soon as they get amari cooper He's going to see the number one target. He's going to open things up for Keon. Let the number one target sit on Amari Cooper while Keon gets fed. I'm cool with that. Romeo Dobbs, George Pickens with now Russell Wilson. I think that connection is good. And A.J. Brown at the wide receiver position. Now, tight end, I would still like to look to get Jake Ferguson, the guy I told you to draft. Kate Auden obviously gets a spike as well. Kyle Pitts has been being safe as well. George Kittle, he's going to get his share work. Now, they did have Hopkins there. Uh, you could say that things are going to open up for Kittle. Uh, sorry, I'm going to say George Kittle. Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey could also see a spike as well. With the acquisition of Hopkins, he's going to be drawing the number one corner or even number two corner, whatever it may be, and it's going to open things up for Travis Kelsey, who should see an uptick as well. But with tight ends, like I say, I say in all my videos, Grab the most consistent tight end. The tight end is getting the volume every single week and start him because it's a very thin and trim position, all right? So, guys, common sense. People buy recency biased. You want to exploit that. You want to say, hey, that guy is hot right now, but he hasn't been hot this entire season. It's probably a good time to sell or don't get baited in off players coming off these pinnacle weeks and they haven't been consistent throughout the entire season, all right? So I gave you a bunch of players you want to trade away and not be fooled into grabbing, and I gave you a bunch of players you want to acquire. There, you could leverage them, man. You could leverage a Laporta off a hot week and get a big-name player. You just got to be creative, okay? Make sure you guys subscribe, thumbs up, drop your start to sits questions for Fantasy Football Week 8. I hope you guys have an outstanding weekend. We'll talk soon. Smash it, tap it, slap it, and join the Counselor's Edge to get the edge in bets as well. We'll talk soon. I'm out.